I had a question one of my videos and it was somebody who said, look, I've got all these eight bar ideas. And I just don't know what to do with them. Or I find it hard to go to the next stage or to indeed to put a chorus in or a midsection and all of that. Well, of course, we all find it hard sometimes. But what I'm going to try and do is to put my little two bob in and to describe how maybe we could think about song structure. Let's have a look. On the iPad, then you can see an eight bar section. So this might be typical of a you know chord sequence that somebody's come up with. I've got drums, bass, guitar and piano, and it's a bit like this. So there's my eight bars. I just programmed that in just now just to save a bit of time. So how am I going to create a chorus out of this? Or how do I do it? Well, we're in the key of E major, as we can see here. So we have a set of chords that go with that key. E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, B, C sharp minor. And we can have other chords in as well, like D sharp diminished or a chord of D, which is the flattened seventh in the key of E major. You could have a G major chord, which is the flattened third, or you could have a C major chord, which is the flattened sixth. There's lots that can be done. I'm on a standard sort of smaller iPad here, so I get, I think, eight chords available. Yeah, there we go. There's the chords that are available here. So I'm going to... Well, I'm going to start by saying that not all bits of music have different sections for the chorus or mid range or mid section. For example, I will survive. It's the same eight bar sequence that goes throughout. You think, well, how do you keep that interesting? Well, there is the chorus, of course, which is the words, I will survive. And also there's things like the string line, da, 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 ba, 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 da, 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 all of that sort of stuff. So there are things that keep you sort of hooked for that tune, but it's one chord sequence. If you want me to stay by Sly and the Family Stone, that's four bars. There are tunes with only two chords in. I mean, Magnolia by J.J. Cale has got two chords, then it goes to another two chords for the midsection and then comes back again. So a lot of it is in the production of how you were, uh, you know, how you approach this. So, for example, I'm going to create 16 bars. I tend not to work in sections on the GarageBand sort of platform. I just find it a little bit too clunky. I like seeing everything on one page. I know you can do that, but then you, if you tap on something, it takes you back to that sort of different section, etc. So I'm going to actually shorten all these phrases. And I'm going to select all and then paste at bar nine. Why am I doing this? Oh, hang on. Sorry, I'll just co copy that again. Copy, there we go, and paste. So I've got the same again, but maybe if I change, let's say I had a verse and then into a chorus section, I could actually change the drummer to just be a little bit more busy and a bit louder, maybe. See what happens with that. Uh, the bass could change but if I just go from the end of the verse we can hear that the drums being a bit louder may lift this into a chorus line for example. And that might sort of you know give you a bit of an idea of maybe what to do with that if i just got um i don't know um a synth or something more sounds um synth classics synth leads i don't know something that's fairly um you know fairly inoffensive yeah it's a little bit old school for this perhaps um it could be something else it could be um any line really. In fact, what I could do is just sing something in. That might be better. So if I just grab my headphones, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and come up with a, a hook line that works as a chorus over this particular section. So I'm just going to plug my headphones in and see if I can 
uh, recorder line. So audio recorder, I'm going to go for more sounds and clean. I'm going to go, da, da, da. that's all right on the, the mic there. I'm just using the internal mic of the iPad uh, and I'm just going to record a line. Okay, so there's my little top line. Uh, sometimes the voice, you know, does all, but you know, it's a, sort of a good option for this. So I'm just going to put a bit of echo, reverb, some compression on, just cut my bass because it's vocals on a mic and just lower it in the mix slightly. Now at this stage you're probably thinking, well yeah, but you're just sort of overcooking the same chord sequence. Well, yes, I am. But is there any harm in that? Well, of course there isn't. But what we could do is we could actually change the, the bass sound a bit, or we could actually add some chords in. Now this is where, if I just duplicate this track, and uh, maybe, because I start with an E chord for two bars, then it goes to A. But so each major chord has a relative minor that it goes with. So my E chord, for example, I could have a C sharp minor chord that goes with it. Let's just solo out the guitar and press play here. Now there is a sus4 note in there, which I'm going to change because actually that's going to create a few problems for me. Um, it's it's the A, wherever that is. There we go. I'm going to turn it into a G sharp instead, which is the major third in E. That's better for my purposes. So you've just got to check that this is going to work. Now I'm going to solo out the other guitar, but I'm going to maybe just go to strings here. So switch it off. And maybe try a rhythm. I used the autoplay rhythm before. So we're still on the same chord sequence, but I'm just going to go a bit further into it. So there's my little counter line. I'm just going to go back in and quantize that. So track settings, quantization and straight 16th. Actually, it's eighth notes. So I'm just going to mix this slightly lower, but I'm going to put a few little bits of processing. Now, when a chorus line comes, like I'm pretty much dealing with this at the moment, there are ways of making it sound like a chorus without necessarily increasing the volume. And actually, we've got to be a bit careful with that because you don't want the chorus to suddenly blow your head off. You want it to be this natural sort of um, step upwards. So if I just go from the last few bars here. The drums are already louder. So if I just maybe go and find some percussion, now you can duplicate the drummer track. Um, you can have up to two drummer tracks on a GarageBand uh, project. So I'm just going to go into the second one and go back to bar nine, click create. And this time I'm going to have percussion only and take away the drums. I could actually get the percussion sounds from, uh, from the uh, options available as well. So uh, let's have a look. Uh, tambourine, perhaps. <music> tambourine always works. Always works. So I'm going to go back to the uh, main page, but just sort of tone it down a bit. It's quite loud at the moment. So let's just listen to the end of the verse. And it's put it on both sections. So I'm actually going to delete that uh, and just have it in the chorus only. Mm -hmm. 
if the listener hears a hook line, they're not going to care what the chord sequence is. It could be the same chord sequence all the way through. Now let's have a, a think about maybe a midsection. Now this is where the chords really sometimes do change. It doesn't have to, it can still be the same. So I'm going to add uh, another eight bars. Uh, so let's get for 24 bars. Ooh, there we go. And I'm going to maintain the drums, uh, the, the these two instruments, because I want the midsection to sort of build up in advance of a final chorus, perhaps. These are just opinions that I'm sort of banding here. Of course, you can do what it is you want, but it's sometimes just thinking about the simplicity of something, keeping things simple and keeping things from being overly complicated is actually a really good good idea. So with the bass here, I'm going to go to the relative minor. So I'm in E major, so I'm going to go to C sharp minor. So I'll just click on the bass there and I've got my autoplay ready. So here we go. Notice that I press each button slightly in advance, just so it, ca it really does catch beat one. Sometimes it doesn't renew the chord um, in time. So I did C sharp minor, G sharp minor, I don't remember my chord sequence. So uh, with the acoustic guitar here, I had the autoplay on two. But maybe... Let's try that as a, as a level of complexity. You can actually completely tweak all the notes afterwards. Let's see what happens. Maybe I'm going to have strumming instead. Okay, here we go. So that's not working at the moment. It's not catching those changes in time. I'm just going to make sure that I can hear what I'm doing also. Uh, just turn the guitar up a little bit and have another go. See what happens now. Okay, it sort of went slightly awry at the end but there, but I had a B with an A in the uh, the chord, which actually worked quite well. I pressed each button also to stop it, so it didn't sort of strum everything all the way through. Now I could actually do something with this guitar as well. Now I had C sharp minor, which means I could have an E chord on my little picking uh, sort of line that I had here. Let's have a look. <laughs> something like that. Okay, so I've got midsection there with the guitars grand piano I could do something else I could have maybe um, a chord I could actually play the chords rhythmically in perhaps so instead of an auto play I could have like a little rhythmic hook Okay, so I've got three sections. Now I've got my verse sequence, which does this sort of thing. So 
So it does actually, it is quite sort of gappy and a much, much less. And then the chorus. And then a mid section. Now, of course, you can work in sections on GarageBand, but what I'd actually do with this more is to actually create a long line, for example, you know, just, I don't know, 147 bars or something, and then actually just work with the arrangement that I've got. So an intro, how's that going to go? Well, if we select all of these and just move them on, so we've got an eight bar intro, perhaps, we could have just... Um, I don't know, a bit of guitar at the beginning. So it could be really, really simple. It doesn't have to be eight bars, but if I record something, see what I mean about the thing not catching. So I've, I can press the button of E before I start recording. One, two, three, four, and then I'm in. So I could just have a single guitar, maybe a, some high piano or indeed some vocals. So I don't know, with uh, the piano, I wonder if that would be... Yeah, that would do. Again. <laughs> Ooh, at the end that didn't work, that note. Now, if you do end up in that situation, it's all right, you can go in and edit it. So if I just, uh, it was that one. And then you're into your verse. And then the chorus, and then your midsection. Now the midsection, I might decide I want actually a verse and a chorus, and then back into another verse and a chorus before I do my midsection. So I could get, grab all of these and copy, paste them here, and then oh, get my midsection, and then go for another couple of choruses after the midsection during which I can either fade out or I could go back to my intro. Let's try that. Let's just go back to the, the intro on its own and put that over here. And there is my tune. Now, I, I'm a bit old school with this. I, well, I used an Atari back in the day and I've got Logic and I use Cubase and other things where you can do that without these sections thing. I don't really warm to those so much. Now, of course, the verse my first verse and the second verse are going to be exactly the same. So maybe if I went into drummer on the second verse here and actually went into the, the drummer itself, I could just have it slightly more complicated and maybe tr you know, try some a different cymbal pattern. So there are ways of making this work. And of course, this could be a guide track for your sort of real guitar playing or real piano playing, but it's a really convenient way of getting a song together. So I hope that this helps in some way, sort of not to worry too much about, oh yeah, what chords are there? What chords must I use? It's really what chords work with your top line and how you can experiment with things like relative minors. That's a really important thing to, uh, to, to use as well, because it means you can get these more complicated chords without necessarily knowing it. So there we are. There's a little, there's my sort of two bob on this. I'll just play it back from the beginning and leave it running so that you can hear it. 